So guys, welcome to this quick training. Today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to book more appointments on IGDM. Now if you don't believe me, I'm just gonna to throw some stuff on the screen. This was like back in March when I was actually appointment setting. Uh, as you can see, I book like maybe four to five appointments a day. Sometimes I book like 10 a day. As you can see, these are like legitimate results. I'm not just messing with you, I actually know what I'm doing. So in today, I really wanna dive into this example. Now the thing is, is that before we dive in, um, understand this. When you do this type of method, you have to act like someone that actually cares about their clients, cares about somebody or cares about like, let's, like, let's say your lead or your prospect was a friend or your last customer, your last client, right? That you like, let's just say like, you would never actually get any more clients without this one client. How would you treat them? How would you behave? This is how you have to follow up. This is how you have to talk to them. This is what you need to do for this conversation to occur for them to actually book a meeting, okay? So let's start with that. I'll dive into the personality in a second. So intro, very simple. Permission-based openers usually work. It depends on how you wanna pitch it, but this is how I pitch it. So if we scroll here, it's like, hey, name, no bullshit, but I have a business sales pitch. Is it all right if I can pitch it to you? Now you didn't see it for the first time. Obviously people just aren't on the DMs. Special hack to do this is that when you do the DMs, make sure to like their photos at the same time comment on their photos. It'll actually make them respond in the DM through the sent request box. I'm sure you've seen it, right? So make sure you do that and then be like, is it all right? Is it okay? And they'll be like, yes. And then you go in with your offer. This is what we had at the time. We have a pay per result performance offer where you pay once you get more clients and customers for your business, okay? It's a pay performance offer, risk reversal, and it reverses the risk based on the client. And they're like, how so? Okay, this is what we need to do, guys. This is super important. We call this the curiosity tendency. Okay, this is how you keep people curious because they're just like, how do you do this? What do you do? That means they're wondering. That is a good thing. You know, that's the good thing. When your clients ask you questions, it's a good thing, guys. It's not a bad thing. So you, what you say is like, just depends on your current business. Since I don't know you, I don't want to assume we can help you or not since I'm not you. Why would I say something like this? And why would this be important in terms of just psychology and understanding the ego and how it plays with human beings and human behavior? Well, the thing is, is that the reason why I say that is because think about like, think about it like this. If I told you like everything in your world is based on what I tell you about. So for example, like you have to do X, Y, Z thing in order to win. You have to, you know, do like, I don't know, you have to, like this is how you send dms to people and this is how you talk to people and this is what you must do if i gave you these commands would you listen to me you probably would not listen to me think about it i like, truly think about it. you don't know me i don't know you so why would you listen to me you should listen to yourself so that's exactly what i'm trying to paint here i'm trying to paint the picture of control i'm giving control to the person so that it's like oh i'm not forcing you to talk to me I'm making you think like we're having a conversation, but in actuality, it's a sale, okay? This is like a technique, a skill set. So let's go through this. So that is the permission-based opener. Rewatch this if you have to. And then what we do after that is the problem, the why, the what. So when he asked how so, we obviously want them to be so curious enough to bring up a problem in their life, in their business, and X, Y, and Z, right? So as you can see here, see, I was like, I don't know, depends on your business. Um, you know, the name of the client, like John, you know, like it just really depends on the business, it depends on you. I don't really know yet, but what have you done? And he's like, well, I just started from scratch with Viral Deals Vault. It's a Shopify store I built. Now, usually what I would do here is I would ask one like specific question. It's like, like why, or what have you done? Or how long have you been doing it? Or X, Y, and Z. Sometimes you need to do that depending on who you talk to, but usually yeah, I do that. But in this one, I think I went very quickly. But um, as you can see here, that like, hmm, how do you plan to scale it, then sell it as a company? I don't really know how well I can help you unless we speak or something. As you can see here, this is what we want. Now I'm going for the close very quickly on this, but you have to understand the more questions you ask in this conversation, the longer it is, they tend to be more qualified. But as we go through this conversation, right, what we're doing here is that we're saying like, hey, um, John, I don't really know if it can help you. I'm just assuming based on what I see. You told me about this problem. I wondered why you had that problem, how long you've been dealing with this problem. And then what have you done to try to fix it? 
reason why we do this again people call this console like consultative selling it's not really what you're doing is you're asking questions so that they can you know basically convince themselves okay it's a it's a psychological hack okay so this is the what and the why and as you can see that's a great pitch like i know it works guys i know what i do works like it's no bullshit you saw my calendar you can see it here on my screen so it's like well i don't know you so like would you be against us speaking to see if it can work or not? I can send you my calendar if you want and we can speak on a scheduled time. Why would I say it like this? Again, we call this status framing in sales. I do this like in person. I also do some cold calls. I do this in DMs. What we're doing is building a status frame between us and the client so that they're just not like, you know, he's free all the time. I'm not free all the time, John. You know, it just really depends on you and your situation. And then the reason why we say against us is because it's like, no, Josh, I won't, I won't be against it, right? You know, the reason is because human beings have this weird nature when you put something to a level of extreme, like if you pull it to an extreme of, let's say, negative or positive, they tend to, you know, not, not try to aim for that extreme. So it's like, for, for instance, like, um, hey, um, John, would you be completely against or would it be completely unreasonable for you not to do this no it won't be because you know based on what you told and based on the logic behind what you just said i think it makes sense you see what i mean guys it's how you carry the conversation now this is the problem but why again i would expand a little bit more on the why here of how long you've done it what have you done why you're doing it all these things so we can pull up the reason of why we need this conversation to occur okay so from here, we asked the permission to send the link. Now, usually because he said, please, I just send it to him. But usually what I say here is like, John, is it um all right if I can send you my calendar link? John, is it all right if I can send you my link to my calendar? John, is it all right if I can send this to you? John, um, is it okay? Do you mind? Like all these permission based um, questions that you send, they'll be more inclined to listen to you because you're not forcing them. Understand, all this is a psychological control of the conversation where it seems like the person has more control than you. But at the end of the day, right, we know who has more control in terms of just psychology, right? The person that asks the most questions in a conversation tends to have more control. Okay? So understand that. So that's that's how you do that. Now, if we go over here, right? If they don't book or whatever it is, for whatever reason, now this is this is what turns out in this conversation, it seems like he didn't really book it like, you know, the first time. So what you can do is send a pattern break or a pattern interrupt. This is what we do a lot in sales, but this is a psychological mechanism that you use in real life all the time. The thing is like, if I give you an example of like, if you guys were walking down the street and you saw like a bunch of bananas fall from the sky, just random shit, you know? just falls from the sky and you're like what the hell is that i'm so curious that is what we need it's a pattern break because it's not something that you see on the normal daily basis like if it was like just cars passing by and someone fell off their bike right yeah you'll notice it but you're like oh i've seen that before so he's probably going to get back up or go to the hospital right but the thing is you've never seen bananas fall from the sky right so that is a pattern interrupt that's what we're doing to our clients when you know if they don't book it or whatever you want you know so what i did is I actually sent a voice me like memo to him now okay i'm just gonna put this on the screen and i'm just gonna let it play hey Lervante, it's josh i'm still not too sure if i can actually help you or not since you know again i don't really know you and i don't really know your situation so i didn't really see you book it so i just wanted an update you can shoot me back a message and let me know cheers yeah um definitely uh no worries man um i just didn't know your situation so i don't want to assume that you know what what we could do is something i can truly help you with i just needed to know more about your situation before you know we can decide anything sound good yeah um Lorvante, did you check out the new video um if you check out the new video on my story on youtube it might potentially help you in terms of your paradigm of how you can actually see your life and your business so it reflects the right way so you can scale up your company i'm not too sure what you're doing i'm just assuming right now but if you check the videos you'll see what i mean and it might potentially help you cheers 
Hey, Levante, just about to head on the call in the next 40-ish minutes or so. Um, hope to speak with you then. Now, with that being said, right, I hope you were able to understand the tonality of why I was saying what I was saying, right? In terms of that conversation, right, as you can tell, right, I was very, like, nonchalant. My tone was very slow. I was very much like, you know, Josh, I, or John, I, I don't know if this would help you or not. It just really depends based on your situation and what you actually need because you might you might not actually even need it because what you have you know i'm assuming what you have might be better right i'm assuming you're getting a lot of clients with what you have right that's what you want to do it creates more leverage but also creates more control for the prospect so you can control the conversation okay so then from there let's say they book it right whatever it is right what you do is uh let's say you're going on this meeting now what you need to do on the day of, this is like March 19th, I guess, at like, I think 7, 7 p.m. Before the meeting, what you have to make sure of is that you must confirm with them. And people mess this up a lot. I don't know what it is. It's just 24 hours confirmation. But what I usually do for myself, if I really want to make sure that they'll actually like show up on the meeting, is that I send it like at least an hour, like hour, three hours before, like as you can see here, just to confirm. I'll be like, Hey John, um, I just I just had some time to get back to you. Um, is it all right if we um still speak? Um, or you can actually you know do it better like this. Like if you make an assumptive, so it's like John, like um, yeah, I'll see you at um you know seven p.m. Um, I'll speak with you then, or um, I'll speak with you in the next thirty minutes. Um, I just I just had some time to get back to you. Say something like that. You want to create a way where. It's able to keep you in status mode, aka like high leverage, but also at the same time, you're able to continue the conversation so that it, it sort of like leverages this idea of like, hey, I'm in control of this conversation so I can leave whenever I want to, aka like for the prospect. So understand these things, guys. Like I don't just book meetings just for the sake of booking meetings. You guys don't know that it's just, it's all a skill set. So let's talk about personality types, guys. Now, the thing is, I hate boxing people into this, but I want you guys to understand this. I'm sure you've seen this before. The A type, the assertive type, the very nonchalant, very like in your face type of person. And then there's the B types that just listen to you just based on your conversation, okay? Again, don't don't, don't try to box people into this, but this is like, I just want, want you guys to understand on what type of personalities I see a lot, okay? In terms of just sales and in terms of just appointment setting. Now, the thing is, the best way to handle A-types and people that are very straightforward to your face, I'm sure you've had those clients, right? Where they're just like, just give me the price and I'll let you know whether I want it or not. Or just tell me right away so I can see if I even have the money. Or, hey, just tell me X, Y, Z options and I'll think about whether this is the right option. Now, the thing is, these people believe they have control of the conversation all the time. What you can do, and I, again, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I suck at this, guys. But the best thing I found from other salespeople and other people in the industry is that if you're able to disarm them with humor, it works nine times out of 10. If you're just able to make them laugh, that works as well. The, the number one thing you have to understand here is like, don't let them take over the conversation. You know, don't let them take control of the lead. Because what happens is that when you do that, you're going to lose the sale regardless. Because these people will not listen to you regardless of what you say. So therefore you have to break their mold of the way that they think. And it's very, very hard to do that. The second way I found is that this is just on DM and you can try it on DM if you want to. Never tried humor on DM, but you can try this as well. On DM, what you can do is that you can basically upplay what they're saying. So what I usually do is like, they're like, um, well, cut to the point, Josh, or like, you know, what's the price or whatever. I'm just like, makes sense, John. I'm, I'm just assuming what you have might be better, right? I'm just assuming that, you know, you must be getting tens of, you know, hundreds of clients per month, right? Based on what you just told me, based on that opener, right? Let's just say we go to their what and why problem based on that conversation, right? As I showed you earlier, right? If we go there, then if they have this type of personality type, the more likely they'll, they'll break themselves down and be like, no, I'm not that great, actually. You see what I mean? Like people like put, put, like putting themselves in extremes. So it's like either extremely bad, completely against something, which I'm not, or, you know, extremely positive to be like up to the point where they're just like, you know, I'm very, very good at this, but you know, I'm not the best at it.
you know, people love doing this, you know, it's if you're able to push these two extremes to the side, like to the sidelines, and you can really see in terms of how large you can stretch this continuum based on their personality types, you're going to be able to win this conversation regardless. So understand that. So it's like, are you completely against this? No, I'm not really against this. Or I'm assuming you're, you're getting a bunch of customers with this XYZ thing, right? I'm just assuming, right? You're getting a ton, a ton of meetings, right? Then they're usually going to be like, no, not really. I'm just, I just started X, Y, and Z. And then they tell you about their situation. You see, you want to break the mold where they can open up the conversation and actually talk to you. That is the issue with a lot of, I would say, like openers and people that disarm other people. You just don't let them open up enough so that they can engage with you, okay? You want them to engage. And that is the hardest part, I would say, with most salespeople and sales reps. But um, yeah, like this is, this is how you do it, guys. Anyways, I want to keep this video up to this point. I hope you got some value out of this. If you like videos like this, join my Discord, join my Facebook group, free stuff in there. And also, um, if you want to work with me, again, I should have some type of form or some type of thing on my link that you can, you know, fill out or you can just book directly on my meeting or on my meeting link, I mean, and then we can go from there and see if I can even help you or not based on, you know, this video, this conversation. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the next video.